Uh, okay, now let's start the webinar. Uh, good morning and welcome you all. In this uh, AI9 AI session, uh, myself, Archie Desai, I'm a host for this webinar. Guys, if you have any question and queries, please put question on chat box. We will try to help you out. Going ahead and talking about our event sponsor that is Synergetics. So Synergetics is an India one of kind co-porting learning solution company. Now you will get a question like who we are and what we're doing. So answering your question, we bruise through our offering and also give comprehensive advisory service to client who wish to modernize their framework. Also Synergetics solution offering that is Persona-based onboarding solution, onboarding add-on solution, certification solution, certification add-on solution, reskilling solution, emerging technology training solution, certification hackathon solution, cloud adoption solution, latest technology training solution, sales pre-sales training solution, practice playbook solution, and architecting solution. Then what this Microsoft certification does, it will give you complete learning experience. You will build confidence to appear for the exam and get certified that is organized. Uh, this is skilling journey here. You can advance yourself first. You have to complete fundamental certification. Then you can go with the advanced role based certification and expert level certification. Uh, in fundamental certification, we are providing you five types of certification that is ASN 900, AI 900, DP 900, PL 900 and SC 900. In associate level certification, we are uh, providing you uh, AJ 104, AJ204. Here you can see uh, on my screen there is a uh, lots of certification is associate level certification. In expert level certification, we are providing you AZ305, SC100, PL600, and AZ400. Also, we have specialty certification that is AZ120, AZ140, and AZ220. If you want any certification, you can contact us. I already shared contact details on chat box. So certification will certification will help you to increase your visibility, expand your knowledge and skill. Also, we provide certification add-on, onboarding add-on like short duration modules and more. Then moving our training is organized and handled by the ATC community. So our ATC community is open to all the people who are interested in our cloud technology and various emerging technology. Then we have emerging technology community for all. Then Azure Tech community for Punekars. Emerging technology community for Suratkas, Azure Tech community for Nagpurkar. Guys, you just have to install the Meetup app on a device that you can follow our communities. Then you have to follow a code of conduct which will create a respectful environment for all the participants. Please note that participants are not allowed to take screenshot of the presentation and cannot do screen recording. We will try to upload this training on our official YouTube channel. Then today, uh, speaker for this training is Misha. He is a Microsoft certified trainer and currently uh, work with Synergetics as a trainer consultant. Agenda for this webinar, you will get to know more about the topic and benefit of it. Also, we are providing you AI 900 learning achievement best. Just you have to follow the step and you will get the activated badge. Make sure guys, you follow us on our LinkedIn, Facebook, Twitter, YouTube for upcoming workshop and webinar. Uh, thank you, guys. Uh, now I would like to hand over this mic our speaker, Smisha. He will continue ahead. Thank you, Archie. So, good afternoon, everyone. And let's start with our webinar. I'll just go ahead and share my screen. All right. I believe my screen is visible to all. Now, let's go ahead. And uh, before proceeding with the concepts of today's webinar. I would just like to give a brief introduction about myself. As Archie mentioned, my name is Smith Shah. I'm a Microsoft certified trainer and I've been delivering training on data science related technology since the past five years. And I've trained more than 7000 students on various data science technologies, including machine learning, deep learning and many more. All right, so that's just a brief introduction about me. Now let's go ahead. And uh, what we'll do is we'll start with our webinar. So guys, in this webinar, 
will be focusing on AI and how we can use AI in Azure for your day to day needs. OK, I repeat in this webinar, we'll be focusing on AI, also known as artificial intelligence, and we'll be seeing how you can use the Azure Cloud Platform for your daily needs and how you can incorporate artificial intelligence into it. All right, fine. So in this webinar, we'll be for performing three labs. OK, the first lab that we'll be performing will be to analyze text. OK, so we'll be having some text with us and what we'll be doing is we'll be going ahead and we'll be using Azure and we'll be seeing how using Azure we can go ahead and analyze text. So for example, let's say you have some YouTube comments. OK, and you want to analyze that. What is the sentiment of those YouTube comments? Whether it was positive, negative, whether it was mixed. OK, so we can go ahead and we can do that. We'll be seeing today how to analyze text. After that, we'll be understanding how to translate text. OK, so let's say we have some review in uh, Spanish language. Now you don't know what that review is saying. OK, so if you want to translate it to any other language, let's say you want to translate Spanish review to a review in English language, we can go ahead and do that as well. Then the third lab that we'll be trying to perform is to translate speech from one language to another. So what I will be doing is I'll be speaking something in English and then I will be asking my AI code to translate it to Hindi. OK, or we can even use um, the same code to translate uh, English language to Marathi language or translate, let's say, French language to Italian language. OK, you can do that. So these are the three main labs that will be performing today. If we get time, we will dive into other labs as well. But uh, this is the main agenda for this webinar, wherein we'll be trying to cover these three labs. First will be to analyze text. Second will be to translate text. And third will be to translate speech. All right, let's go ahead. So let's start by understanding what is AI. Let's go ahead and let's start by understanding what is AI. So if anybody asks you what is AI, you will just say that AI is a set of tools used for two purposes. OK, if anybody asks you what is AI or what is artificial intelligence, you will just say that AI is a set of tools. Used for two purposes. First purpose is to get inferences from the data. By inference, I mean insights. So you can generate inferences from data or insights from data. And then the second purpose is to get predictions from data. OK, so let's say based on how it has rained. Till the year 2023, I want to predict how it will rain in the year 2024. OK, so we can use AI to do that as well. So what is AI? AI is just a set of tools that is used for two purposes. First purpose is to get inferences from the data. Second purpose is to get predictions from data. Now, how do we do that? How do we get inferences and predictions from data? We do that by using something called a AI model. OK, how do we get inferences and predictions from data? We do that by using something called a AI model. So you might wonder what is a AI model, right? So let's go ahead and let's try to understand what is a AI model. So it is nothing but. A statistical representation. It is nothing but a statistical representation of a real world process. OK, what is a AI model? It is nothing but a statistical representation of a real world process. OK, in simple words, I'll just mention it over here. In simple words, we are trying to simulate a real world process. In simple words, we are trying to simulate a real world process using statistics or mathematics. Right. So what is a AI model? It is nothing but a statistical representation of a real world process. In simple words, we are trying to simulate a real world process using some statistics or in other words, mathematics. OK, let me try to 
give a example over here so that this definition is more clear so suppose i have some housing related data okay and i have information about the square feet of the house okay let me go ahead and let me write it correctly first of all so let's suppose i have housing related data and i have information about uh, the size of the house in square feet okay then i have information about the city in which that house is okay and then i have information about the price of the house okay so let's suppose the first house that i surveyed had a square feet of 100 square feet city was let's say mumbai and let's suppose the price was 1 crore let's say the second house that i surveyed had a square feet of 200 square feet the city was let's suppose mumbai and the price was let's say 2 crore now based on this data let's suppose if somebody asks you that let's say if the square feet of the house is 300 square feet that house is in the same city mumbai then what will be the estimated price of the house okay so in this scenario can anybody estimate the price of the house what would be the estimated price of the house in your view can anyone mention it in the chat for me can anyone mention it three crore right as ravi had rightly mentioned three crore right so what did you do ravi and uh, divish can i say in your head you try to use some mathematical formula to arrive at your answer right you try to use some statistics to arrive at your answer yes or no in your brain you try to use some statistics right and that's exactly what a ai model does it tries to use a statistics to simulate what would happen in the real world okay just like devesh and uh, ravi okay and manoj right uh, and santosh use some statistics to simulate what would happen in the real world a ai model does exactly that all right so just to revise what we have learned up till now so the first question that we try to understand is what is AI? So if anybody asks us what is AI or what is artificial intelligence, we will just say that artificial intelligence is just a set of tools which is used for two purposes. First is to get inferences from data. Second is to get predictions from data. How do we do that? How do we get inferences and predictions from data? We do that by using something called a machine. We use that. We do that by using something called a AI model. What is a AI model? A AI model is nothing but a statistical representation of a real world process. In simple words, we are trying to simulate a real world process using some statistics or using some mathematics. So now we know what is AI and we also know what is a AI model. So guys, Azure has created many such AI models that we can use for our day to day needs. Okay. It has already created some AI models for us to use. So uh, that is what we'll be doing today. Okay, we'll be going ahead and we'll be using some of the AI models that have been created by Azure. Okay, uh, so that we can use it in our day-to-day -day tasks. Fine. So let's go ahead. And uh, the first lab that we'll be performing will be to analyze text. So guys over here, I have some reviews with me let's suppose i have five reviews with me okay let's say i run a, a hotel and um, let's say uh, customers have given some reviews on that hotel or let me take another example let's suppose i have a website called make my trip okay and uh, customers have posted their reviews on make my trip let's say i own make my trip okay and customers have posted their reviews on make my trip now i want to analyze those reviews okay that uh, do we have positive reviews do we have negative reviews what type of reviews we have okay so over here i have five reviews with me okay here is my first review then let me show you my second review okay like that i have five reviews with me i believe out of the five the first four are in english language okay out of the five reviews the first four are in english language and the fifth one is not in english language fine so i don't need to worry uh, the ai model created by azure will take care of it 
whether it's in English language or not, we don't have to worry. And you can see over here, these are lengthy reviews. Let's say I don't have time to go through each review one by one. I don't want to waste my time. Okay. Uh, I mean, here there are just five reviews, so it's fine if you, uh, you know, go through the reviews manually. But let's suppose if you have 5,000 reviews, in that case, going through each of the reviews manually to understand the sentiment behind those reviews is not possible, right? So what we'll be doing is uh, we'll be using an AI model created by Azure that will go through all the reviews and it will analyze those reviews for us. Okay. And then it will tell us whether the review is bad or whether the review is good or whether it is mixed. Okay, whatever it is, the AI model created by Azure will communicate that to us. Fine. So let's see how to do it. So what we'll be doing over here is um, on the search bar, you have to search for Azure AI service. Okay. And here you can see um, there is an option for Azure AI service. So all you need to do is click on this first option over here. Okay, and now uh, we want to use a AI model created by Azure. All right, so let's do it. So what I'll be doing over here is uh, I'll be using a model that comes under this category called language service. Okay, so let me go ahead and uh, let me use this model that comes under this category over here called language service. Okay, basically, over here, the model under this category will help us to analyze the text written in any language, whether it is to analyze text in English language or to analyze text in French language, whatever language it is. Okay, this uh, the AI model in this category will help us to uh, analyze text in any language. Fine. So let me click on it. And uh, I will say I want to create a resource over here. Okay. So let me go ahead and let me create a resource. Let me click on continue. And now over here, I can see a form that I have to fill. So let me go ahead and uh, let me show you uh, what do each fields in the form mean one by one. So guys, the first field in the form over here, the first field in the form is called subscription. Okay, so over here, uh, what is a subscription? Let's try to understand that. So guys, subscription is nothing but, uh, you can say a billing unit, okay? So for example, in this subscription, MSDN subscription, I have around 8,400 rupees left, okay? So whatever money will be deducted, will be deducted from this subscription. Like that, in your account, you could have more than one subscription, okay? Let's say in some subscription, you have 8,000 rupees. In this next subscription, you have 1,000 rupees. So you need to decide that, okay, whatever charge will be deducted will be deducted from which subscription. Okay, fine. So, all right. So you just need to choose the subscription over here um, from where the cost will be deducted. Then over here, we know we are creating a resource over here. Okay, so any resource that we create in Azure has to belong to one resource group. Okay, any resource that we create in Azure has to belong to some resource group. Now, what is the benefit of creating this resource group and what is the benefit of putting the resources in one resource group? Let's try to understand. So for example, let's say you are performing a project and you have created 20 resources for the same. Okay, let's say you have created 20 resources for the same. Let's say uh, in Azure you have used um, SQL resource, uh, you have also used uh, storage resource, Okay, you have also used uh, many, many other resources. So let's say like that 20 resources you, uh, you have used for your project. Now let's say the project is done and now those 20 resources are of no use for you. So you want to delete those 20 resources just so that no cost is, uh, uh, you know, uh, deducted from your subscription. Right. So let's say now that the 20 resources are of no use to you. So you want to delete those 20 resources. If you individually delete the 20 resources one by one, it will take you a lot of time and it's not that efficient. So why don't we put these 20 resources inside one resource group? Why don't we put these 20 resources inside one resource group? And let's say I am done with these 20 resources. Then what I can do is instead of individually deleting them one by one, I can directly delete the entire resource group only 
with help of that all the resources within that resource group will automatically get deleted okay so one benefit of putting resources on a resource group is life cycle management that resources that have the same life cycle should follow should fall in one resource group okay what is the other benefit let's say you want to calculate the cost that your project um uh, you know basically you want to calculate the cost uh, 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 incurred by your project now how would you do it let's say your project had 20 resources so will you go to each resource and see the cost uh, you know incurred by each resource one by one well that will be very tedious okay you will go to one resource calculate the cost second resource calculate the cost third resource calculate the cost and then at the end sum all of the costs together that is how you will find the total cost uh, incurred by your project but that is very inefficient right instead of that what you can do is if these 20 resources okay that belong to one project are in one resource group then you can directly see the total cost of all the resources in that resource group in one go okay so it helps you to uh, do cost management better okay like that basically if you want to manage the resources in a better way it's important that resources that uh, belong to the same project are in one resource group now if you put resources that belong to same project in different resource group will it give you any error no it won't give you any error it's just that managing resources becomes better if resources of same project are in same resource group okay but if at all you put them in this different resource group that's not a issue okay you will still be able to do the task it's just that management will be a little tricky for you all right so let me go ahead and let me create a new resource group here if you already have some resource group with you and you want your resource to go into that resource group you can however over here i'll create a new one let me call it test resource group or test rg now next what i need to do is uh, for this resource that i'm creating i need to select a region okay so make sure that the region that you choose is closest to your user let's say i'm creating this resource for a client in us so i'll make sure that the region that i choose is closer to us just to minimize latency okay uh, that's all let's say uh, on the other hand i'm creating this resource for a client in india i'll make sure that i choose a region that is closer to india just to reduce latency here you can see there are multiple options for region available fine i'll keep it default okay i'll keep it to east us only then I need to mention the name for my resource. So let me go ahead and let me mention the name over here. So I'll go ahead and I'll put a name and uh, I will just say test analyze text. Okay, uh, fine. I feel that would be enough. Uh, here it gives me error saying that this name is already be uh, already used by someone. So over here I have to put a different name. So let me go ahead and do that. Let me put a different name. Okay, now this name is unique, so that's fine. Next, I need to choose the pricing tier. Okay, now there are many different um, values that are possible in pricing tier. Here, it just gives me one option. Going forward, when I will show you uh, different different resources, there you will see different options for pricing tier. However, in this resource, I just have one option. So I'll just go, I'll just go ahead and choose that option. Fine. Uh, then let's go ahead, let's click on next. And uh, then you have to mention the settings for your network configuration. Okay, there are three options. In the first option, what will happen is people will be able to get access to this resource on public internet. Okay. Uh, in the second option, what will happen is people will be able to get access to the resource on public internet but only those people will be able to get access if uh, they are ip address specified okay so in the second option what you will have to do is if you select the second option basically you are saying that don't give access to every person on the public internet only those people that belong to these ip addresses only they should get access so let's say you want that only people of your company should get access so what you will do is you will make sure that you mention the ip addresses of all the people in your company and only the people in your company then will be able to get access in the third option guys in this third option okay this option over here uh people won't be able to gain access to the resource from the public internet 
you will have to configure a private network for the same and uh, only people that are trying to access this resource using the private internet will be able to gain access fine however i will keep it default i will make sure that i choose this option saying that any person on the public internet can access this resource okay let me click on next button and here i have some uh, settings to specify for identity so let's go ahead and let's try to understand it so uh, what is system assigned managed identity so this is like a built in id card for the, for the resource so if you turn it on azure will create and manage this id for you okay uh, so that the resource can use it safely to talk to other azure resources without needing separate username and passwords so this is like a built in id card for your resource and if you turn it on azure will create and manage this id for you okay on the other hand if you if you don't want to let azure create and manage the id for you if you want to create it okay so there's like a custom id card that you create and give to the resource so you can make many and you can choose which ones to give to the resource okay so if the resource needs different permissions or needs um to use different resources you can use this option to manage those identities okay so in the first option it's like a built in id card where azure will make sure to create that id card for you and manage it okay and uh, it will make sure that uh, in order to access this resource that you are creating uh, the authentication is you know dealt with from azure's end only okay however if you don't want to let azure create and manage that id card if you want to do that you can go ahead and do it using this second option fine however i will let azure do that so i'll make sure that system assigned managed identity option is enabled okay after that let me click on next button and here and i have option for setting tags tags are like sticky notes for your resource okay so uh, let's say you have created multiple resources and you want to search for those multiple resources okay let's say over your career you would create more than 600 to 700 resources now you want to search for a particular resource that okay in this webinar i had created this resource so how how do you find it because this particular resource the language resource you would create it many many times okay uh, in that case uh, using the option of tags is much beneficial for you because tags helps you to ident uh, to you know search for the resources okay so it's like sticky note that you assign to your resource so here you can set a name you will say purpose okay i can assign a name to the tag saying purpose and the value could be webinar okay so let's say if i have created many such language resources and i want to search for a particular one i want to search which language resource i had created for webinar purpose i can go ahead and do that with help of this uh, facility called tags however in my case i don't want to assign tags so i'll leave it empty fine let me go to the next option and here it says validation failed why have i missed something yes I have failed to check this checkbox over here. It says that yes, I acknowledge all the terms and conditions. So let me uh, check this checkbox. After that, let me go to the last page, and here Azure will run a final validation just to check if the settings mentioned by you uh, are possible to uh, are possible to configure or not. Okay, it has run that validation. it feels it is possible to configure and now if we are fine with all the details entered by us i uh, will just go ahead and click on create button and that will create this resource for us and using this resource we will try to analyze text okay so we already have some uh, reviews in text format we'll be trying to analyze them okay so we'll just wait for one or two minutes and soon this resource should be created so just to revise what we have done so guys first we started with the definition of ai we said that ai is just a set of tools used for two purposes first is to get inferences from data second is to get predictions from data now how do we do that how do we get inferences and predictions from data we do that by using something called a ai model what is a ai model it is just a statistical representation of a real world process in simple words we are trying to understand or we are trying to simulate 
a real world process using some statistics or mathematics okay so those were the two definitions we had learned first was what is ai second was what is a ai model then we said that in azure there are many such ai models that are created that you can use for a, for your day to day needs today we'll be focusing on three such ai models first ai model that we are using will be to analyze text okay so let's go ahead and do that so i have asked uh, azure to create that uh, model resource for me and using that model resource we'll be going ahead and analyze text fine let's do it so i'll go to that resource over here so we have this resource created let me go to it fine and using this particular resource what i'll be doing is i'll be trying to analyze text i repeat using this model resource what i'll be doing is i'll be trying to analyze text let's see how to do it so what i'll be doing over here is let me go ahead and uh, let me open the code in visual studio okay i'll just be opening it up in visual studio over here here it is and i'll do one thing uh, let me go ahead and create a file i'll do one thing i'll go, just go back and let me open up visual studio in this particular folder all right and i'll be writing some code and what that code will do is it will use the model resource created by us to analyze text let's see how to do it so let me uh, write code in python language so i'll create a new file over here uh, let me call it analyze text.py okay and here i'll be writing my code now let's go ahead and let's write our full code over here okay one by one we'll just go ahead and uh, write our full code let's go ahead and let's start from absolute scratch guys it will be better if you already have uh, exposure to python programming language in that case you will understand the code in a better way or if you have if or if you are not familiar with python programming language no issues um, you will still understand the flow of the code okay maybe the syntax of the code you will have to learn but you will still understand the flow of the code okay fine let's go ahead and uh, what i'll do is i'll just go ahead and uh, i'll try to first you know import all the necessary libraries so let me go ahead and do that so first i'll import all the necessary libraries so in order to access uh, the model resource that we created we'll have to provide some credentials okay uh because uh, over here yes we have mentioned the setting that anyone on the public internet can use the model resource created by us provided that they have the right credentials okay so we'll have to provide some credentials so i will import the uh, necessary library for it okay similarly uh what i will do is in order to an uh, analyze text we'll have to use this um, model resource over here so let me go ahead and let me import the same let me go ahead and let me import the same so i'll import a class that will help me to analyze text okay i'll import a class that will help me to analyze text fine let's go ahead now and what i will do is uh, in order to access that model resource that was created by me i will have to pass two things first is the link of that model resource and uh, that i will get from this section called keys and endpoint okay so let me go to keys and endpoint section and what i want is link to that resource or in other words the endpoint to that resource okay this is what i want fine so i'll just go ahead copy it and paste it in my code so let me go ahead and let me paste it in my code over here okay apart from link or apart from endpoint one more thing that i want is key to access this uh, access this model resource okay 
so here you have two keys it's just like in your house you have two keys right so that if one key gets uh, lost you at least have the other key that you can use similarly here also you have two keys so that if one key gets compromised there is another one that you can go ahead and use it fine um, i'll just go ahead and copy the key over here uh, if you want to see how the keys look like you can see it okay you are although i will hide it and let me copy the key you can copy any key you might wonder whether to copy key one or key two any key you can use fine let me just go ahead and let me mention the key also over here i'll just go ahead and mention the key fine so i've mentioned the link to that model resource and in order to access that model resource i've mentioned the key as well okay using this key i will get the necessary authentication to access that model resource fine next uh, what i will do is um, let me go ahead and uh, let me try to access the model resource created in azure using this key okay so what i'll be doing is over here i'll be writing code to access the model resource using this particular key okay and here in this line of code i am trying to access the model resource created on azure using the key that was mentioned by me all right fine and uh, after doing that what i will do is i'll just go ahead and um, try to wake up the code okay that will allow me to analyze text okay so let me try to wake up that code um, since you are not since most of you guys would not be familiar with python programming language i'm using this basic term over here called waking up but those of you who are familiar with python programming language basically here what i'm doing is i'm creating an object of this text analytics client class okay i'm creating an object of this class for those of you who are not familiar with python programming language just understand like uh, i'm trying to wake up the um, text analytics uh, model okay fine so let me try to wake it up in order to wake it up i will have to mention the necessary details i'll have to mention the link of the model resource that i want to wake up okay uh, after that i will have to mention the credential in order to access that um, resource okay and then i'll have to mention the credential in order to access that model resource fine uh, here just so that there is no confusion let me go ahead and let me set these uh, let me name different variables so that it is more understood by you let me set these different variables so that the code makes more sense all right fine so here i am trying to wake up the uh, model resource uh, in order to wake it up we'll have to mention what is the link of the model resource that we have to wake up and in order to access that model resource what is the credential all right fine then let's go ahead and what i'll do what i'll do is i had already stored my reviews inside this folder called reviews over here so there's a folder called reviews wherein i have stored my reviews one by one okay so what i'll be doing is i'll be going ahead and first i will try to print those reviews for you okay let me go ahead and let me print all of those reviews one by one so i'll say in which folder have i stored my reviews let me go ahead and let me mention it so i will say that i have stored it in my reviews folder okay and then what i will say is go to each file inside the reviews folder okay go through each file inside the reviews folder and uh, if i want to go through each file inside of reviews folder i will have to import a library called uh, for my operating system so i'll say import os okay so that is a library that allows me to access anything inside of my operating system so i'll say in my operating system i have a folder called reviews i want to go through each file inside that reviews folder okay i want to go through each file inside that reviews folder over here go through each file uh, so first print the file name let me go ahead and let me first print the file name 
and let me check at least the file name is getting printed or not so i'll try to go ahead and try to run this code let me check at least the file name is getting printed or not and yes the file name is getting printed one by one fine so what i'll do over here is at least the file name is getting printed so what i will do next is i will say open the file and read the text instead of it okay so i will say please open the file please open the file over here and uh, in order to open the file i will have to specify two things first i will have to specify reviews folder and uh, then i will have to specify that in that folder what is the file name in which i have stored my review okay so these two things i will try to join and that will form my entire path right so my path will be something like this it will be reviews slash review one dot txt okay then for my second file it will be reviews slash review two dot txt and so on okay fine so let's go ahead and i will say that in this particular path what i want to do is i want to go ahead and uh, read the text inside of it in order to read the text uh, i will have to mention some text encoding okay so i will say utf8 which is the general encoding that is followed or the general algorithm that is followed to read all the text characters okay fine it will read it and what it will do is it will try to store that text in a variable and then what i want to do is i just want to go ahead and print that text okay text will be printed but i will have to print it in a readable manner currently it won't print it in a readable manner i will show you okay you can see over here uh, what is happening is i am getting the file name then below that file name i am getting the um, uh, text inside of that file what i will do is uh, currently it is very untidy because then suddenly uh, the content of re review 2.txt starts and after that re review of uh, the review inside review 3.txt starts and so on so in order to print it in a much more uh, better way what i will do is just this i'll just say that uh, make sure that before the file name you put a new line sorry or i'll just say just put these uh, underscores and then introduce a new line after that okay now let me go ahead and let me show that to you i'll just go ahead and run the code okay now you can see a proper separation that okay this is review 1.txt after uh, and instead of that there's the particular review that we have okay after that there is a good separation and then it says we have review 2.txt inside that is the review that we have okay now what i want to do is i want to go ahead and i want to detect in what language this particular uh, you know review is written so let me go ahead and let me mention the same so in order to do that uh, i will use the code that i had woken up in line 9 so let me go down let me save up uh, let me save the woken up model resource on a variable i'll say model okay cog underscore model fine and then i'll use that woken up model resource and i will just say that please model resource help me to detect the language okay please help me to detect the language uh, language in which document i have already mentioned uh, the document over here the whatever text is there in that document is present in this variable so i'll just pass that variable okay and it will go ahead and it will try to detect the language for us however along with the language it will try to print other things as well which i don't want first let me just go ahead and let me check what other things it prints Okay, I'll just go ahead and clear the terminal. And what I will do is I'll try to run the code once again. Let me go ahead. Let me run the code once again over here. And let me check whether uh, it is correctly detecting the language or not. Okay. So for 
review one dot txt here is the review and uh, it is trying to detect the language but apart from language it is showing other things as well like what is the confidence score while detecting the language what are the warnings that we got although there are no warnings over here okay and other things i just want this guys i just want the name of the language nothing else okay all i want is the name of the language fine so let me go ahead and let me get it so currently name of the language is at first position so i will say at index zero just get the value and print it and now let me just go ahead and let me try to run the code inside of this file again and now most probably it should work okay uh, so previously what happened was i had got a list okay i'll just show that to you when i didn't write this uh, code saying that at index zero give me the value what had happened was something like this i'll show that to you again okay so for example you can see this review one dot txt we have the review inside of it and then this code okay this code is giving me this particular result you can see the result is in the form of a list you can see the square brackets at the start and end okay the result is in the form of a list so what I'll do is uh, currently inside that list, I just have one element. Okay, this entire thing is one element only. Fine, so I just want to get that particular element. So what I will say is uh, obviously the first element inside the list will be at index zero. So I will say index zero. Fine, with that what will happen is you won't get the entire list, but you will get the entire content in that list. Okay, uh, I don't want those square brackets. Uh, I want the content in those square brackets. That's what I want. Fine. All right. Uh, and you will see that once I do that, I won't get those square brackets. Now I'll get the content in those square brackets. And uh, now you can see I don't get those square brackets. I am getting the content inside those square brackets. That's exactly what I wanted over here. Now the square brackets are nowhere to be seen. Fine. And what I will do is over here, I will say print the language. So the language is stored inside this key value pair. Okay, so we have first key value pair saying ID is my key and zero is the value. In the second key value pair, I have a key called primary language and the value to that key is this one. Okay, fine. This is my value of interest. This value of interest will be available in, in uh, using which key? It will be available using a key called primary underscore language. Fine. So I will just go ahead and mention the same that uh, please go ahead and inside um, you will have a key called primary underscore language. I'll say primary underscore language. Okay. Let me go ahead and let me run the code now. Fine. And this is exactly what I wanted that now we are getting that value using that key called primary underscore language. Now this value is in the form of a dictionary. Okay, because there are key value pairs inside of this dictionary over here. There are three key value pairs. First is this one, second is this one, and third is this one. Okay. Currently, I'm only interested in the first key value pair. And in this first key value pair, I'm mostly interested in this value, which okay, which which says English. Okay, so this value will be available using which key? It will be available using a key called name. Okay, so I'll just say that get me the value using this key called name. And whatever is that value, I'll just print it to the user saying that, okay, this is my uh, language detected. Okay, this was the language detected. Fine. Let's go ahead and uh, let's run our code once again. And with this, what we are doing is we are detecting the language. Okay, so you can see in review one dot txt, this was the review and the language detected was English. Okay, then similarly in review two, review three, review four, same thing has happened. In review five, you can see this was the particular review and the language that is detected is French language. Fine, so this is what I wanted. 
so this is fine this is exactly what we wanted over here now after detecting the language i want to do more analysis let's say i want to analyze the sentiment in behind that language what would i do let's go ahead and let's try to understand it so i will use my woken up model and i'll say okay model now that you have woken up uh, i want to analyze the sentiment in that language whether it was a positive uh, review whether it was a negative review whatever it was okay so i will pass the document uh, that i want to analyze or I, i should say the review that i want to analyze okay fine so i'm just passing that review and it will just go ahead and uh, analyze that review for me and it will print uh, the sentiment there fine so let me just go ahead and let me check what value we get over here So I'll say print the sentiment analysis. Okay, I hope uh, there is no mistake in my code. I am, uh, I might have a error over here. Uh, let me just check what mistake could I be doing. Sorry, my mistake. This extra curved bracket should not have been there. Okay. fine so basically i passed my document and we know when we pass our document for doing any analysis we get a list from that in that list we just had one element and we are getting that one element using index 0 just like i did earlier okay fine and uh, that will be our sentiment analysis let me just go ahead and let me print okay as to what analysis we are getting okay here i am having a error it says there is a mistake and yes there is a mistake there is a spelling mistake instead of se we should write ze okay so there was a, just a mistake in my code let me correct my mistake and after that it should work okay and you can see for every review over here it is printing the sentiment so for example in review 1.txt this was the review the language detected was english and you can see the sentiment analysis it is giving you a lot of analysis here i just want one thing guys i just want that whether the sentiment was positive or negative currently you can see the analysis is given to me in the form of a dictionary you can see the entire value is surrounded with curly curly braces that means sir dictionary here i just want to focus on this one particular key value pair this one okay just to say whether the sentiment is positive or negative so i want to focus on this particular value in order to get this particular value i have to use this key called sentiment okay so let me go ahead and let me mention it in my code that please give the value which is there um uh, across this key called sentiment fine it will give it to me and whatever is the sentiment it will print out to to me fine so let me go ahead and let me mention the same i'll say sentiment of review fine and now let me just go ahead and check you can see the code works and now let me show you the output of the code you can see in review 1.txt this was the review the language detected in it was english and you can see the sentiment of review was positive okay similar now in uh, second review though the sentiment of the review was negative you can even check over here it says that internet was not working so on and so forth right uh, so our ai model analyzed that and it told us that okay the sentiment of the review is negative okay uh, in the third review the sentiment of the review is mixed okay uh, in the fourth review also it is mixed in the fifth review the sentiment of the review is positive okay so you can do analysis like this so you can analyze the language in the text you can analyze the sentiment in the text uh, let's say you want to analyze the entities um, in that particular text you can go and do it so you can see that okay what are all the important uh, entities that were mentioned and by entities i mean uh, places people organizations so what are the important entities mentioned in those Uh, reviews so you can do that as well okay it's called entity recognition analysis so for example i'll use my woken up model and i will ask my woken up model to recognize entities 
okay by entity i mean any pe person mentioned in the uh, text any place mentioned in the text any organization mentioned in the text okay so if you want to recognize those you can go ahead and recognize that as well fine so i'll just say that i'm passing you the document inside the document um read the text inside of it recognize the entities mentioned in those text okay and we know that it will give me a list so from that list give me the first value inside the list first value inside the list will be at index 0 right we know in order to access first value inside the list we have to use index 0 in order to access second value inside of list we have to write index 1 and so on fine python developers would know that all right fine let me just go ahead and let me print and let me check what happens over here i'll just go ahead and check what happens i'll clear the output run the code again and your in entity recognition you can see it has given me a lot of things so for example let me start from, from review one this was review one the txt this was the review in it the language detected was english sentiment was positive however when we try to recognize the entities it is giving me a, lo a long analysis over here okay what i am interested in is um the entity you can say name and entity category okay so that particular thing is available over your entity name for example it's staff and what is the category it belongs to person category fine so i want this this is available inside of my second value over here okay this is inside of my second value this second value is available using this second key called entities okay so this second value can be accessed using this second key called entities. So I have, just have to specify in my code that give a uh, print that value that is available using this second key called entities. I'll just go ahead and do that, clear the output. And let me check. So over here, uh, you can see now it is only giving me that second value that I wanted. Okay, but it's still a long value. What I want is uh, from this long value, I just want to check uh, the name of that entity and the category that the entity belong to. Fine. So I will just go ahead and uh, I will say that print the name of the entity. So I'll say dot text. Okay, so I believe uh, this should be fine. I'll just go ahead and try to run this code. Okay, one second. Over here, uh, I'm getting the entities. Let me just store it in a different variable. I don't want to pass it inside. In fact, I should pass it outside. OK, that will be better. Just a small syntax change. After that, it should work. OK, here I am getting a long. OK, I'll do one thing. I'm still getting error. It says text is not available. I'll do one thing. This I'll store it in a variable. I'm doing a mistake in my um, syntax let me just store this entire information in a variable and let me print that variable and whatever work i want to do i'll do it in that variable only fine let me just go ahead run the code one time just to check that long output that we are getting and fine for example in review 1.txt this was the particular review the language was English, sentiment was positive. And as far as the entity recognition that we did, uh, there's the long uh, information we are getting. So for example, you can see first thing that was detected was some staff was mentioned, right? Then uh, the name of Royal Hotel was mentioned. Then the name of London was mentioned. So as I said in uh, entities, 
you will have people you will have places you will have organization so all of those entity names that are mentioned uh, will be displayed to you over here okay so what i want is just this i will say that okay you have uh, lots of uh, entities mentioned so i'll have to use a loop because if i just write dot text it won't work because i don't have a single entity with me i have multiple so i'll have to mention a for loop i'll say for every entity in this collection that i have please go ahead and print the entity name and apart from entity name also print the category of the entity okay also print the category of that entity so for example we know some staff is mentioned and the category that it belongs to is person type then the next entity that was mentioned was royal hotel right the name of that was mentioned which category it belongs to location okay like that fine so over here i'll also mention the category of the same all right that's enough uh, i'll just go ahead and uh, try to run my code over here and this should be enough to get our desired result let's check i'll just go ahead run our code and yes this is exactly what we expected over here so for example in review 1.txt this was the review the language detected was english sentiment of the review was positive yeah, and you can see the entity and the category of those entities mentioned okay so for example the first entity was mentioned was staff okay maybe a word like staff was used it belongs to person type category then royal hotel term was used it belongs to location category in order to make it more better what i will do is i will just say that now uh my entity recognition analysis is going to start and after starting it let me do one thing the name of the entity and the category of entity i'll separate with this particular symbol okay that will be better fine let me clear the output let me run it once again okay now this is much better so for example in review 1.txt this was the review the language detected was english sentiment of the review was positive and you can see an entity recognition has start started and uh, you can see the name of the entity as well as the category that it belongs to so, so fine over here we have done an analysis on some text okay and that analysis we have done using a ai model that was already there in azure we didn't create the model ourselves we just used the ai model that was created in azure okay fine and uh, hardly some rupees will be deducted from my account okay hardly um, i would say 5 to 10 rupees for, because over here the text was small Obvi obviously if the text is big then more rupees will be deducted fine all right so over here uh, we have performed our first lab which is text analysis okay up till now guys is it making sense uh, the first lab that we performed although if you are new to python the um, syntax of the code you would not understand but i hope the flow of the code made sense okay so this was our first lab that we performed over here uh, manoj devesh ravi understanding guys santosh yes okay so this was our first uh, lab guys now let me go ahead and let me move on to our second lab in the second lab what we'll be doing is we'll be trying to uh, translate text okay so if we have uh, our text in one language let's say english language i want to convert it to french language something like that fine so let's see how to do it so uh, let's move on to our second lab now and we'll be trying to understand how to perform that second lab okay so first i'll close all of this code we are done with our first lab okay and let me move on to the second one 
and just to give you a sense of how much cost it would have deducted let me go to subscriptions and let me check So I'll go to cost analysis and it will give me an analysis of how much cost was deducted for that particular lab that I performed. It is trying to load the cost analysis, so we'll wait. Okay. And here I'll try to get it based on, let's say, resource group. So I'd already created a resource group. Okay. Uh, and I want to analyze it. Okay. So, for example, uh, the I guess this was the previous resource group that I had created. Okay. Uh, it would have been better if I had given it a different name. That would have been better, but fine. I'll do one thing. I'll go back because test RG. This one is not, although I named my resource group test RG, but this isn't uh, the same one. I mean, I, I had named my previous resource group also test RG. Okay. There was another lecture that I was doing and in that I had named my resource test RG. Okay. Uh, so here this isn't, and you can see here I had created different resources. Okay. However, uh, I want to check my uh, resource group. Okay, do I have different test RG? No. Okay, it seems that for my current resource group, it's not showing me in this list. Let me analyze by resources. Let me check the current resource that I created inside that resource group. Let me check the cost for that particular resource. Okay, and uh, let's check. Do we have that resource available to us? Uh, Okay, here I'll just try to sort it. It's already sorted though. I'll just check. Do I have it with me? It was called what? Uh, I believe my resource was called analyze text, something like that. Is it updated over here? Let me check. If it's updated, then I'll be able to see it. I just want to show to you that the cost is not too much. That's all. Okay, it seems it might not have been updated over here. That's fine. It seems it might not have been updated. Okay. Anyways, my main goal was to show that the cost is not too much. Although there is another way I can analyze this, which is that I'll just go, I'll just try to refresh. And I believe before I started my uh, lecture, cost was. 8498 now let me check although i got a notification saying i have the same cost left okay i have the same amount left okay so it seems it has not updated because when i started my lecture it was 8498 now also is the same okay so it seems it has not updated over here but fine even if it updates i just wanted to show to you that hardly some rupees will be directed okay uh, so it's not that costly that hardly some rupees will be deducted. Although before I started this uh, webinar, at that time also I had the same credits left. Now also I have the same credits. But uh, that is because this updation has not happened. Okay, fine. It might be doing it after a few hours or so. Anyways, I just wanted to show to you cost is not too much. All right, after its update, after uh, that cost gets updated, um, at that time we'll be able to see it properly. Anyways, our first lab is over. Our first lab was to analyze text. Now what we'll be doing is we'll be trying to perform our second lab now. So let's go ahead and let's try to perform our second lab. In the second lab, what we'll be doing is we'll be trying to translate text. In our first lab, we tried to analyze text. In our second lab, we'll be trying to translate text. Let's see how to do it. 
So in the search bar, just search for Azure AI service. And uh, let me click on that option for Azure AI service. Now, if you want to use anything inside Azure AI service, you will have to use it as a as a resource. OK, so let's go ahead and let's um, use something as a resource. What I want to do is I want to perform my second lab, which is to translate text. OK, so I will create a service that comes under the translator category. Fine. Let me go ahead and let me click on it and let me create a service that comes under translator category. I'll click on create button to create that resource over here. Uh, I'll make sure that the resource is inside this resource group called test RG. OK, you can keep it in a different resource group also does not matter. However, the previous resource that we created is just 30 minutes back and this resource we are creating uh, have the same life cycle, right? For example, after two hours, they will be of no use for me, so I'll be deleting them. So if those resources are in same resource group, it will be much easier for me to delete them in one go. OK, that's all. Uh, anyways, let me choose a region. I'll select East US name for this resource. Let me give it a name saying test or let me call it. Translate text webinar. Then a pricing tier and now you can see different options for pricing tier, right? Let's go ahead and let's try to understand. Uh, so here the first option that is shown to you is standard S1. So this is a pay as you go tier where you pay for the number of characters you translate without any monthly commitment. OK, to character means um, anything that you can type on your keyboard. So for example, you can type alphabetical characters, you can type numeric characters, you can type symbolic characters, you can even type a space character, right? It's called a white space character by the way. So if you type space, OK, just if you press space key, that's called a white space character. Fine. So anything that you can type on your keyboard is called a character. OK, so uh, standard S1 is a pay as you go tier where you pay for the number of characters that you translate without any monthly commitment. So this option is suitable for those who prefer a flexible spending model based on actual usage. Then the second option that is available over here is called C2. So this tier offers a monthly commitment of 62.5 million characters. It's uh, meant for applications with a higher volume of translations where the usage is predictable and a commitment can reduce the cost per character. OK, uh, then the next option is uh, C3. So similar to C2, this tier offers a higher monthly commitment of 250 million characters, providing a larger scale for users with even greater translation needs. OK, uh, then you have C4. This tier increases the commitment further to 2.5 billion characters per month. OK, this is suitable for enterprise scale ap applications where they have extensive translation requirements. Then you have D3 pricing tier. OK, this is the highest commitment uh, tier displayed with a massive 675 million characters per month. OK. Uh, it's tailored for uh, largest translation workloads. Uh, so, okay, so you can, if you want to choose this option, you can. Okay. However, in the last four options, guys, uh, yes, per character, they will be cheaper for you, but you have to put a monthly commitment. Okay. It's like uh, you will be paying a fixed cost for 62.5 million characters. So, even if you use 30 million characters, same cost. Even if you use 62.5, even if you use 60 62.5 million characters, same cost. OK, but per character cost will be lower in, in these last four uh, tiers. OK, whereas in the first tier, the per character cost will be slightly higher, but it's more flexible because you will, you will only pay for what you use. Let's say you're, on, you're only using 100 characters, then you only pay for 100. OK. Whereas in the second tier, second tier does not matter if you pay, if you use 100 characters or 62.5 million characters, still you will pay the same. Fine. So for me, I feel the first option is better currently. So I'll choose that option. Then uh, the other settings, I'll keep it default. The network settings, identity settings, tag settings, those we already know what they mean. Uh, they were available in the first resource as well. We know these options. So I'll keep it default. Identity settings, I'll keep it default. For tags, I won't assign any tags over here. OK, and uh, let me just go ahead and try to create this resource. 
this resource I am creating for my second lab. Let me go ahead and let me create this resource. And you can see where I have created it. So once it's fully created, what we'll do is we'll be writing code uh, wherein we'll be trying to use this model resource that we have just created. So our first model resource that we created was used to analyze text. However, this second model resource that we are creating will be used to translate text. OK, so let's go ahead and let's see how to do it. OK, fine, creation is complete. Now what we'll do is we'll be going ahead and we'll be writing our code. So. Let me move to this folder called um, translate text. And here I'll be trying to open up Visual Studio. Let me open up Visual Studio. Here it is. And what I'll do is I'll create a coding file. I'll say translate text.py. OK, and what we'll be doing is um, we'll be writing our code line by line over here. Fine. So the first thing that we will do over here is uh, we'll just go ahead and mention the link to access that model resource that we created. OK, so we just created a model resource two minutes back. So let me mention the link for the same. Let's go ahead and let's do it. So in order to get it, I will have to go to this section called keys and endpoint. And here I have the endpoint available with me. So let me go ahead and let me uh, use it. I want to perform text translation. OK, so let me copy the link for the same. And that link I'll paste it over here. OK, so there is nothing but the link for that or there's nothing but the endpoint for that uh, model resource. That we just created. Fine, you can call it endpoint, you can call it link. It's fine, the same thing. OK, fine. Uh, then after I reach that um, resource in which resource in which region that they, does that resource lie, I will have to mention that as well. So it lies in East US region. So let me go ahead and let me specify that. OK, so it lies where I will say it lies inside East US region. Then once I go to that model resource, then what, what will be the key to access that resource? So I'll just go ahead and mention the key. I'll just show that key how it looks like. You can see it and I'll just take uh, any one of my key over here and mention it in my code. OK, fine. Now uh, let's go ahead, guys. And uh, what we'll be doing is. We'll be trying to first of all uh, print the text inside. Uh, the review files that I have. I have the same review files that I had used in my first lab. Same review files I'll be using in my second lab as well. OK, so let me go ahead and uh, let me write the code to print the text inside these reviews. We already know the code for the same. OK, so what I'll be doing is I'll say what is my reviews folder? In fact, instead of wasting time, let me just go ahead and let me get the code that I used for my first lab. OK. This was the code that I had used to print the text inside those review files. Same code I'm using over here. However, in order to before using it, what I'll have to do is I'll have to import the OS library, which is used to deal with any uh, deal with anything inside of my operating system. Anyways. Oh, your first thing is to print the text inside of these review files. We had we had already understood the code in our first lab. Same code I'm using it in my second lab. OK, let me go ahead. Let me run this code. Let me check and here you can see. Yes, I have the reviews uh, printed or I should say I have the text printed inside of all of the review files. All right. Now. Uh, next, what I'll do is I'll try to detect the language. Once I detect the language, I will ask my model resource that I've created to convert the text from one language to another. OK, fine. So let's do it. 
So let's see how to do that. So first of all, I'll have to construct the entire URL. So URL will be this link to my model resource. Plus I will add another extension to it. I'll say slash detect. OK, so basically after this link, another text will be added called slash detect. That will be the entire URL in that URL. Um, basically, there will be a model that will try to detect the language of the text. Fine. So this is my entire URL. I'll just go ahead and pass a request to that URL. In order to pass a request, I will have to mention some of the settings over here. So let me go ahead and let me mention the parameters first. OK, so I will say this link that I have used in that link. Uh, we know that we'll be having a model behind that link. What will be the version of that model? I will say 3.0. Fine. After that, uh, I will say that any other necessary settings that I want to specify, I can go ahead and specify it. So in order to access the model inside of this URL, I'll have to mention some necessary details. Like for example, what is the key? What is the uh, region in which that model rise and so on. OK, those necessary things that are needed for authentication. I'll go ahead and mention the same. So let me go ahead and let me mention the same. I'll say what is the key? OK, and my key. Is stored in this variable already. After that, let me go ahead and let me also mention the region. OK, so my region is also stored in this variable over here. Fine and. Uh, all right, and I'll be passing some information to my model. I have currently not passed uh, any main information, but that main information, the main content will be of which type. So I'll say content type. Uh, will be of JSON. JSON means what that it will be in the form of key value pairs. OK, I'll be passing some main content and I'll show you what I'll pass. OK, but I'm saying that main content will be in the form of JSON. JSON means key value pairs. OK, Python developers would know what key value pairs are. But anyways, uh, now let me pass the main content. OK, fine. Uh, it will be a collection, but inside that collection, I'll have a key value pair. As I said, my main content will be in the form of key value pair. And what text I'm passing for the model to detect the language from uh, my text is available in this variable called text. OK, that entire variable I'll pass over here. Fine, so I've mentioned the necessary details, the parameters, the headers, the body for the request. Now let me go ahead and let me actually make the request. In order to make the request, I'll have to import the request library. Once, in, once it's imported, what I will do is I'll just tell my code that please go ahead and uh, post a request to that link. Post a request to that URL. This was the URL that we had generated. Post a request to that URL. Wherein make sure that you pass the parameters. We are all, we have already established the parameters. OK, just so that there is no confusion, I'll rename that parameter. OK, then what I need is I need the headers. I've already mentioned the headers over here. Let me rename it with a different variable. All right, the header information I'll pass. Uh, then the main. Content that I need to pass the main text that I need to pass. From where I want to detect language that is in the form of JSON. We know that. OK, so let me go ahead and let me pass the main. Content. OK, I've passed the main content over here and um, over here I'm passing a request. Let me go ahead and let me. Uh, store that request that I've passed in a variable. Then what I'll do is. OK, uh, from that request, you will get some response back since the request was made in JSON format. The response will also be in JSON format. So let's get back the response. And after we get back the response, I want to print the response for everyone to see. 
So let me go ahead and let me print the response also. Okay, and let's check. So over here, I'll clear the output, run the code again. Let's check what response we get. Okay, so for example, in review one dot txt, this was the review. Uh, this review we passed to the model resource for uh, detecting the language, and this is what is the what it has detected. It says that okay, the language is English. Okay, similarly in review two, review three, review four, review five. In review five, you can see we had review five dot txt main text inside that review. And you can see it has detected French language. OK, language is FR French. OK, so it has detected this language over here. Um, what will be doing is one thing. Currently, you can see that each response that is generated is in the form of a list. You can see square brackets from the start and at the end. OK, currently inside that list, I just have one single value. This entire thing is one single value. In order to get that first value from that list, I will have to use index zero so let me mention index zero with that i'll get the content in the list not that entire list but the content in the list okay that means this the square brackets will vanish and i'll only have the content instead of that list fine let me just go ahead and let me check fine and now you can see those square brackets have vanished here you can see it i only have the content instead of that list okay the content is in the form of a dictionary uh, and in the dictionary we have key value pairs this is my first key value pair this is the second this is the third this, this is the value that i am more interested in this value can be accessed using this key called language okay so i'll just go ahead and tell my code please give me the value that is available through this key called language fine i'll just go ahead do that change OK, and uh, now you can see that I have review one dot txt. This was the review in it and the language detected in that review. Let me write it more appropriately. I'll say language detected. Is whatever. OK, let me clear the output run the code again. Now you will see the language detected, but uh, it will be written in a much more readable manner. Fine. So the language detected in first review is English. Similarly, in second, third, fourth. OK, in fifth review, it was French language that was detected. OK, once we have detected the language, what I want to do is I want to translate it into any other language. What I want to do is let's I want to go through reviews and if the language that was detected was not English language, I want to translate it. OK, how do I do it? So I'll say, please check if the language that was detected in the review was English or not. If it was not English, then translate it. OK, so what I will do is I will say, please check if this language that was detected. OK, or rather let me store this in a variable. So I can use it in my code later on. OK, fine. And now what I'll say is please check if the language detected is not English. So in the uh, review, if let's say the text is not in English language, I want to translate it to English. OK, that's what I want. OK, now what I'll have to do is in order to translate, I will have to call another uh, model that is there behind the scenes. OK, so I'll have to construct a URL for the same. So what I will do over here is I will say that uh, we have the main endpoint to reach that uh, resource of the service that we created. Okay, and uh, here I want to add another path called slash translate. Okay, here I want to add another path called slash translate. OK, so basically at the end translate will be added. That will be my entire URL. Now behind the scenes in this URL, some model will be there that will go ahead and do the task. What what task that model will do? It will go ahead and translate it 
to any language that you want. Fine. So first I will have to mention some important parameters before passing the request. So I'll say behind the scenes you have some model. What is the version of that model? So I will say that the version is let's say 3.0. OK, let's say if you want to use previous version, you can use that as well. Here I will use the current one, which is 3.0. Uh, then from which language? So I will say from the language that was detected previously. And do you want to translate it to which language? So I will say I want to translate it to English. OK, fine. Uh, then let me go ahead and let me specify. The other important authentic authentication details. Fine. So I'll go ahead and do it. I'll mention the other important authentic authentication details just like I did earlier. Same thing I'll do over here as well. OK, same exact thing I'll do over here as well. Same exact thing you can see. Fine, and then the main content. So let me go ahead and let me pass that main content. So just like I had done previously, same thing I'll be doing over here now as well. OK, and that's it. What I will do now is I'll go ahead and pass a request. So just like I had passed the request earlier, I'll go ahead and do it now also. Is this that previously I had passed it to a different URL? Now I'm passing it to a different URL. OK, that's all fine. And I'll get some response back. OK, the request was in JSON format, so the response will also be in JSON format and I'll get some response back. What I want to do is I want to go ahead and print that response. OK, let me go ahead. Let me print that response over here. OK, and. Uh, here I'll just say. Mm, fine, in fact, let me just stop my code over here. And what I want to do is. This this is it. I don't huh. Over here, one small correction in my syntax. And after that, I believe uh, this should be it. I don't think I need to do any other change. Uh, I'm fine with my code. However, is there a error? Let me check. Is there any other error that my code is suffering from? Mm, any other error? What could be that error? Any other error that my code is suffering from? OK, let me run my code and at that time I'll try to analyze those errors. OK, it says from. Oh, sorry, my mistake here. I forgot to put a comma. Here. OK, here I had forgotten to put comma. That was the only mistake. Fine, I've corrected that mistake. Now let's run the code. OK, so for example, for the last uh, review, the language detected was not English. So since it's not English, it tried to convert it back to English. OK, and I'm getting some output. That output is in the form of list. You can see square brackets over here. What I want to do is I want to get the content in that square bracket. Currently, I just have one element inside of the list. Uh, so in order to get that element, I'll have to use index zero. Fine, let's do that. Let's run the code. I'll get the main content. OK, that main content is in the form of a dictionary. Uh, and here, this is the key of the dictionary called translations. And inside of it, we have this entire value. OK, so in, in order to get into that value, first I'll have to use this key called translations. So let me go ahead and let me try to use the same. So I'll say get the value that is available through this key called translations. OK, let me run the code again. OK, now you're getting a list. So currently in the list we have one element only, which is this particular element. In order to get the first element inside of the list, I'll have to use index zero. Let's do that. Fine. And we'll get the element inside of the list, not that entire list itself. 
Okay, now you have that element and currently it is shown to you in the form of key value pair. This is the first key called text. The value in it you can see from year to year. Then there's the second key called two and the value also you can see. Okay, so we have two key value pairs. I just want to focus on the first key value pair whose key is called text. So I will say give the value whose key is called text. Okay, fine. Let me run the code. And fine, you can see for the last review, the language detected was French. It was not English, so it converted it to English. And fine, I'll just go ahead and print the same over here. I'll say translated review. Fine, and this will make it more readable. So if the review is not in English language, it will try to convert it to English language. If it's already English, it will keep it the same. OK, so for example, in review 5.txt, this was the review. The language detected was uh, not English, so it tried to convert it to English. OK, that's what it did. Fine, I can make it more readable by making sure that I put this in a, a new line. OK, let me put this in a new line over here. I'll just go ahead and put this in a new line. Similarly, the other print statements that I had. Let me make sure that whatever they are printing, it's also in a new line. OK, so for example, this one also. Should be in a new line. OK, that's it. Now it will be more readable. OK, so we know what this code does. It checks if the language of the review was English or not. If it was not English, it converts it to English. For example, this was the review in review 5.txt. The language detected was French. Since it was not English, it converted it to English. OK, so this was a second lab, guys. Uh, in the first lab, we tried to analyze text. In our second lab, we tried to translate text. OK, we'll do one thing, guys. We'll take a short uh, 15 minute or so tea break. We'll be back at uh, 1 p.m. and then we'll move on to our third and final, final lab for today. OK, uh, let's take a short uh, 15 to 17 minute break. We'll be back at 1 p.m. where and after which we'll try to continue with our third lab. Guys, up till now, uh, is it making sense? We have performed two labs already. Uh, did the flow of the code make sense? Obviously, uh, if you are slightly new to Python, the syntax you might have to. Um, you know, learn, but I hope the flow is making sense to everyone. Uh, Ravi says we can also directly use this code. Uh, so Ravi says if I don't want to use code, uh, then is there a way to do that? Yes, there is a way. OK, there is a way to do that. However, it's not available for all the models that Azure creates. OK, so there are only few models that you can use without code. OK, I'll be showing you later one of them. Uh, I'll be showing that to you later. However, not all the models that Azure makes available to you can be accessed without code. There are only few models like that. OK. Uh, however, I hope whatever labs we have performed up till now, we have performed two labs. First was to analyze text. Second was to translate text. So I hope these labs have made sense. Have they made sense, guys? Manoj, Santosh, Ravi, Nikita, Sahu. OK. Uh, if there are any doubts, you can ask me. Ravi says, are these sample? Achha, are these sample can be checked in? Achha, you, you mean uh, the code? Is it available somewhere? Is that what you're saying? Is, is the code available in Azure portal? Uh, the code will be available. The sample code is available on uh, Azure website. OK, so if you go to the documentation page of Azure, uh, the sample goes will be available to you. OK, similar uh, samples will be available to what I have written. OK, similar code will be available. If you want, I'll give you a link at the end. Uh, in that you will find all the necessary code 
that you can use to perform uh, these labs. OK, uh, today we are just performing three labs. However, if you want to perform more than that also, all of that will be available. Uh, you know, in that documentation page, I'll give you that link for the same. But then you will get the code and everything for all the labs. Not code, Achha, this is not code like using tool. We can do these verifications. Uh, but he not in this model for, uh, for you know, uh, translating text, analyzing text. But let's say you, uh, we have a model for analyzing document. Uh, let's say uh, invoice. Okay, so we have a model for that. For that, you can do two things: either uh, do it with code or without code. Okay, so as you mentioned, uh, document, right? Uh, if let's say I have something like invoice. OK, uh, let's say I mean, I hope uh, some of you are working already, right? So you would have invoices that you would get at the end of every month. So uh, let's say if you want to analyze those invoices, how do you do that? There are two ways. Do it with code, without code. OK, uh, then there is one more model for analyzing videos. Let's say there is a video, but in it there is no caption, no nothing. OK, you want to analyze the video that OK, what are the people involved in this video? Uh, then uh, what are the places that are mentioned in the video? OK, uh, what are the captions? You want to auto generate captions. All of all of those analysis. OK, so that can also be done with code without code. So I give you examples of two models. First is a model for uh, document analysis. OK, wherein you can analyze invoices and other documents. Uh, second is the um, video analysis model that can be used with code without code. OK, uh, but this particular ones that we are using cannot be accessed without code. Um, there is still a way in which I can make it available to you without code, but it will be it's not. Uh, by default available in uh, through the Azure portal. I can make it available to you. What I'll have to do is I'll have to create an application and I will make sure the application is created in such a way that you can access the model without code. But by default, it is not made available by Azure. Fine. So by default, what Azure makes available to you is uh, it only makes available to you access to few models without code. Like as I said, document analysis model video analysis model. OK, but not all the models it will make available to you without code. Like for example, this translate text model, analyze text model that cannot be accessed without codes. OK, I can make it available to you without code, but for that we'll have to do some work in the back end. OK, but by default Azure does not do that. OK, anyways, I hope that answered your query. Ha, huh, OK, Ravi says, can we use Angular uh, to write this code? Uh, yes, you can use Angular. I have, I have in one of my lectures, I have already done that. Um, if possible, I will try to search for the video of the lecture and give it to you. Yes, you can write it in Angular la language as well. Uh, Satyaban says, what are the limits of this model in workload capacity? OK. So Satyaban, when we try to create a resource for that model, no? at that time, if you remember, there was an option for pricing tier. So the, at that time, I'd said standard tier. That means I will pay as I go. There was no limit for any number of characters that um, are involved in my, you know, lab. Okay, so for the pricing tier that I chose, there was no limitation. However, if you remember below standard tier, there was one more tier, right? Uh, wherein we had to choose the monthly limits that are allowed for using that particular model. Okay, so for example, in one tier there was a limit of 62.5 million characters, so you'll only be able to go up till 62.5 billion characters per month, not more than that. If you want to go more than that, you'll have to change your pricing tier. So limitation is only with respect to the pricing tier that you choose. Okay. Apart from that, there are no limitations. So depending on the pricing tier that you choose, you will have a limitation. But apart from that, there are no limitations at all. OK. Fine. Uh, I hope the two labs that we performed made sense uh, to everyone.
uh, we'll do one thing. We'll take a short uh, 10 minute break. We'll be back and we'll be moving on to lab three. OK, so let's take a 10 minute break up till 1 p.m. and we'll be back to perform lab three. OK, till then I'll just keep my mic on mute. Uh, hello guys, I already shared a redemption code. Please uh, redeem your badge. You just have to follow the step and you will get the activated badge. Guys, uh, first you have to sign in on Microsoft Learn account. Then you can go with the step four that mention URL. You uh, then you can click on that URL and you will see the redeem button. You just have to click on that redeem button and you will get the activated badge. If you are uh, facing any problem, let me chat box.
Uh, guys, put done after redeeming your badge so I can see who are done with the badge. All right, welcome back to the session, guys. Hope all of you are back after the short break. Now let's resume. So guys, uh, we are already done with our two labs. First lab was to analyze text using a AI model that was generated by Azure. Second lab was to translate text using an AI model that was generated by Azure. Now a third lab will be to translate speech. OK, so let's go ahead and let's do that. Let's translate speech. So first of all, what I'll do is I'll just close this coding file. And let's go ahead. And now we'll be trying to translate speech. So how to do that? If I want to translate speech, uh, what do I need to do? Let's go ahead and let's understand the same. So guys, in order to translate speech, what you have to do is first of all, search for Azure AI service in your search bar. Click on the first result that pops up. And here you will have options to create a resource under various categories. OK, so what I want to do is I want to use the um, speech translation model that was created by Azure. So you have an option to create a resource of the same. So let's go ahead and let's do it. So I'll click on this option called speech service and I'll create a resource of that AI model. Let me go ahead and let me create a resource. I'll make sure that the resource is in the same resource group as my other resources that I've created today. I'll give a name to that resource. Let me call it translate speech. OK, then a pricing tier. You are just one pricing tier is available, so let me select that. OK, here it says that this name is already available. It's already used by someone. So let me go down. Let me give a different name. OK, this name is fine. The rest of the things like network settings, identity settings, stack settings, I'll keep it the same. I will directly jump to review plus create. OK, let me directly jump to review plus create. We already know what all options come in network settings, identity settings and tag related settings. OK, let me create this resource. And my speech resource should be created over here. It 
it will take around one or two minutes to create it. So we'll just wait till then. And the resource has been created. Let's go to the resource. And now what we want to do is I want to use uh, this particular uh, resource over here in my code. OK, let's go ahead and let's see. Uh, now, as one student was already asking, right? Uh, I guess it was. Uh, let me check the name of that student. Um, I believe it was Ravi. So Ravi had mentioned that are there some models that we can access without code? So yes. This is one such particular model that you can access without code as well. OK, here all you need to go do is go to this option called go to speech studio and uh, you'll be able to work with this uh, speech translation model without code. OK, but we'll do it with code only since the previous model that we have used have been used with code only. Let's use this one also with code. OK, fine. So what I will do is first of all. Uh, open a Visual Studio code, OK. In this particular folder. First of all, I'll rename this folder properly. I'll call it translate speech. OK, and here I will try to open Visual Studio. OK, here it is. Now let's go ahead. What I will do is I'll create a new coding file. Let me call it translate speech dot py. OK, so I'm creating a new Python file over here. And now let's go ahead and let's write our code from scratch. So first thing that I want to do is I want to go ahead and uh, store the key in order to access that uh, resource. Or in, in fact, before storing the key, let me store the endpoint in order to reach that model resource that we created so that model resource that we created what will be the link to access it so i'll be able to get that link using this key and endpoint section in this section i'll be able to get that link okay so this is the link or the endpoint in order to reach that model resource fine then in which region was this uh, resource created so i will say it was created in east us region OK, it was created in East US region. Uh, let me cross check. Yes, East US. Then next, uh, what I need to do now is I need to go ahead and I need to specify the key in order to access that model resource. OK, so let me go ahead and let me mention the key. I'll just copy the key and paste it in my code. All right, let's go ahead. Now what I'll do is um, in Azure, there is already a library available that will help us to do this speech translation using the speech translation model resource. OK, so first let me go ahead and let me do the necessary import from that library. So from that library. I will say. Please import the code. That will allow me to do this speech translation. OK, once I have imported the code, I'll go ahead and I will wake that code up saying that OK, I, I might be able to, I might want to use you. So please wake up. OK, so while waking up, what I will do is I will pass uh, some necessary details. OK, so I'll, so I'll wake up. I'm waking up for doing translation and before doing translation, let me go ahead and let me mention the necessary details. So I'll just go ahead and mention the necessary details. So first I'll need to mention the key in order to access that model resource that we created. Then uh, the region. OK, with these two things it will wake up. Fine, once it wakes up, then we'll see what to do next. OK. Once the code has woken up, what we'll do is we'll specify that. OK, what you need to do is uh, you need to translate speech that will be written in uh, that will be spoken in uh, US uh, in English language. OK, so I will uh, speak something in English language that needs to be translated to some other language. 
so i will say that the speech will be given to you will be in english language okay and the accent might be slightly of us accent or uk accent you might go ahead and specify that fine so i'm basically saying that the speech that i'll be saying will be in english language now i want to translate it to which language so i'll just go ahead and mention the details of the same i will say that i might want to translate it to any other language such as french okay i am keeping my options open yeah, i might want to translate it to french or spanish or i might want to translate it to hindi also okay so i will say him okay so here i am keeping my options open that i might want to translate to any of these three languages fine uh then i'll just print a message to the user saying that now the model resource is ready to translate from these three uh, uh, is ready to translate from english language okay so over here i'll just go ahead and mention the same that what is the language in which the user needs to speak into okay whatever is that language it will print it out so i'll just go ahead and i'll try to run this code let's see whether this code works or not okay and uh, before going ahead and running this code i might have to solve one error over here it seems uh, there is a spelling mistake let's go ahead and let's correct that spelling mistake the name of services okay the spelling of services was wrong uh, apart from that i believe rest of the things are fine so i don't need to change them okay one more syntax change and that's fine okay now let's go ahead and what i will do is i'll try to run this code now the name of the file in which i have written code is translate speech.py let me run the code so it says that okay ready to translate from uh, sp your speech that will be spoken in english language okay fine now let me write the other code okay what i'll do is i'll write my other code now so i will need to mention the configuration settings for the speech so let me go ahead and let me mention the configuration settings over here so Mm, in this scenario what i will do is i'll mention the configuration settings for my speech so let me mention the configuration settings for the speech okay that just like if i wanted to translate something then the configuration for those configuration settings i had to mention the key and region of my model resource for speech configuration also same exact thing okay this will be my speech configuration all right this is done uh, now what i'll do is uh, i want to ask in which language does the user want to translate into so for now i'll keep the target language empty and i will ask the user as to what they actually want to do okay so i will ask the user uh, that you know please enter a target language enter a target language you could enter it in french language okay you could write fr for french you could write fr for french or uh, if you want to convert it to spanish language type es if you want to convert it to hindi language type he sorry hi okay fine and whatever input that user gives i will try to store it in this variable and let me try to print the value in this variable then okay let me check the user's input okay this is good enough i'll just try to run the code 
and here it says enter a target language fr for french uh, es for spanish hi for hindi okay uh, currently it just it just it asks me for the input but it shows it to me in a very bad manner uh, let me go ahead and let me show it in a much more readable manner i'll put it in a new line over here okay all of these options i'll put it in a new line that will be it will be better okay fine now let me run the code and here it asks me to enter the target language fr for french uh, then uh, es for spanish hi for hindi okay uh, i'll also do one thing uh, if let's say the user does not want to enter in any of these languages then i'll just say enter anything else to stop okay i'll just say enter anything else to stop fine and let's see what will happen i'll just go ahead and run the code again okay uh, I'll do one thing. Currently, I need to make sure that this statement called enter anything to stop is shown in a new line. So let me go ahead and let me correct that as well. OK, after that, this should work properly. OK, fine. It tells me enter FR for French, ES for Spanish, HI for Hindi, anything else to stop. So let's say I enter HI. Then it will tell me that the user's input is HI. Okay, fine. And that user's input I'll be giving to my model resource later. Fine. All right. This is done. Uh, what I'll be doing is I'll be using this in a loop. Okay, so while the target language, okay, uh, let me do one thing. Mm -hmm. I'll do one thing over here that if uh, okay, let, let me run this in a loop. And before running this in a loop, I'll have to do one thing that after getting the input, if the input given from the user is within these three options that are available. If the input given to the user is within these three options, then it's fine. OK, I'll say that if the input given from the user is within these three options. Then it's fine or else what you do is. Or else consider that the person wants to quit. Consider that the person wants to quit. And if the person wants to quit, I want to break this loop of asking the user for, you know, converting the speech to a different language. OK, so I'll say unless and until a user wants to quit, keep on running this loop. Unless and until a user wants to quit, keep on running this loop. OK, let's go ahead. Let's mention the same. OK, this is fine enough. Uh, I don't think I'm doing any major syntax mistake. Uh, let me go ahead and let me mention that. OK, if a person has entered anything within French language, Spanish language or Hindi language, then what to do next? OK, in that scenario, I'll have to mention that. OK, uh, the speech say I have mentioned what translation I want to do for that translation. First, I'll be giving some input in speech format. I have given the configuration. Then the system will give me the audio back. So I'll have to mention the configuration of that audio as well. OK. Uh, let me go ahead and let me mention the same. So in fact, uh, the speech that I'll be saying, I'll be giving it to the system using my microphone, right? So here for now, let me give the configuration for that. That OK, what I'll, uh, whatever I'll be speaking, I'll be speaking it through my microphone. So I'll be writing code for the same. Let me go ahead. Let me write the code for the same that whatever I'll be speaking will be spoken using my default microphone. 
using my default microphone. Okay, so I've mentioned that. And once the speech is uh, given by me, okay, then the um, model should do its job of translating it to one language to another. Okay, so for that, first of all, I will wake up that uh, model that performs translation. So let me go ahead and let me wake it up. That please wake up. I'm going to use you now for translation purposes. Okay, please wake up. I am going to use you now for translation purposes. Okay, it will need uh, three things first. What is the translation configuration? Okay, after that, uh, I'll be giving some speech. So, my speech configuration that speech I'll be giving using my default microphone. So, I'll be giving some audio. So, that audio configuration. OK, so these three things will be needed. In fact, just two things. Uh, let me not give speech config. I'll just provide my audio config. That's it. So it was two things. My translation configuration and the audio that I'll be giving. OK, that's it. Uh, now let's go ahead. And what I'll do, be, I'll be doing is once the model wakes up, I will ask the user that please speak now. Now the model has woken up. Please speak now. OK. So the model, once the model has woken up in this line, in this line, what the model will do is it will wake up. Once it wakes up, I'll be asking the user that, okay, please speak now. The model is has woken up. You can please speak. Once the user speaks, what will happen is uh, the model that was woken up, first of all, let me save it in a variable. That model that was woken up will do its job. It will take your speech, and it will try to translate it. OK, it will try to translate it in one go. And it will get the results fine. And whatever result is obtained, we'll just try to go ahead and print it. Whatever result has been obtained, we'll just try to go ahead and print it. Fine. And once we print it, what we'll be doing is we'll also be trying to uh you know read that output okay so although the system will take our speech it will translate it to a different language but we don't want just that text we also want to try uh, you know convert that text to a message so i want my system to read out that message okay currently what will happen is if i just run my code i believe it will just show me the text that okay, if I, for example, if I want to speak in Hindi, I'll type in HI and let me speak. So, okay, let's say I want to convert anything to Hindi language. Okay, so I'll be speaking in English and it will try to convert it to Hindi language. But currently, it will only show me the text of Hindi language. Let me just uh, uh, display that to you. So I'll say convert it to Hindi. Okay, here I have an error. Uh, it says the name of this is wrong. Okay, let's go ahead and let's correct the mistake. I believe over here E should not come. After that, this should work. So just one small spelling mistake. Okay, I'm trying to convert English speech to Hindi. Let's check. Good afternoon. We are in a lecture. Okay. And here you can see it has done the job. It, it has given the uh, translation. OK, uh, you can see it is tried to convert it to Hindi language. Fine, but it is not reading it out. Whatever this uh, response is given, uh, it is not reading it out. I wanted to read it out loud. OK, I wanted to read it out loud. So let's see how to do that. Uh, currently, it is doing some job of, you know, uh, taking my speech and translating it to Hindi, but it's not reading it out. So let's see how to read it out. OK, so what I will do is. Um, I will just take this result in this result. I have lots of things. What I want to do is uh, here. I want to focus on this particular value. This particular value will be available using this property called translations. 
Okay, so I'll say translations. And within this, there are translations in three languages. However, I wanted to choose translation in only Hindi language, right? So my target language is Hindi. Okay, so I'll say depending on my target language, whether it is Hindi, French, whatever, okay, give me that particular translation. So I'll say depending on my target language, my target language value was stored over here. Depending on that, uh, give me the result. Okay, that means what will happen is only this statement will be printed out. Okay, only this statement will be printed out. And before that, I'll just say that okay, the model is doing some translating work, whatever it is translating, that it will try to print out. Fine. Now let's go ahead. I'll try to once again run the code. Okay, let me clear the output. Once again, run the code. And I'll try to convert English to Hindi. Let's see. Good afternoon. We are in India. Okay, here it did some uh, mis. Okay, here it gave me some error. Basically, the spelling mistake is wrong. We'll just go ahead and we'll correct that spelling mistake. After that, our code should work. Okay, let me run our code once again. Same thing. Converts from English to Hindi. Good afternoon. We are in India. Okay, so it has done that, and you can see it has given a translation that Namaskar. Um, Bharat mehas, right? So it automatically did that. Fine. So it is translating, but it is not reading it out. So I want to write the code for the system to read out whatever it has written in Hindi. I want the system to read it out. Okay, how do I do that? So let's see how to do it. So I'll mention some voices over here. Okay, uh, Azure has provided some voices for uh, reading out. Okay, so if suppose the target language is French, then I want to say that please use this uh, voice uh, called uh, Henry Neural. Okay. Uh, on the other hand, let's say if someone wants to translate to Spanish, then I will say please use this voice called uh, Elvir Neural. Okay. And if somebody wants to translate it to Hindi, then I will say, please use this voice called uh, Madhur Neural. Okay, please use this voice called uh, Madhur Neural. Madhur Neural. So here there are some different uh, pre-recorded voices. Okay, and you can use these voices for speaking anything. Okay, of, or for making the system speak anything basically. Fine. So I'll say I'll make the system speak it. Okay. So what it's what voice it choose depends on my target language, right? So I will say that the speech that the system generates will be based on the target language. OK. So I will say it depends on the target language. So I'll say voices dot get get it based on the target language. If the target language is Hindi, then choose this voice. If the target language is French, then choose this particular voice, so on. So depending on the target language, which I had set in this variable, accordingly the voice will be selected. Okay, that's what I want. Fine. Once the voice is selected, I will say, uh, um, I'll ask them to generate that voice. Okay, I'll ask the system to generate that voice. So let me ask it to generate voice over here. Based on the configuration details that I provided earlier. It will generate the voice, whatever generation it does, I'll store it in a variable. Okay, fine. And uh, then I will ask it to speak it okay fine so over here it will make that plan as to what it wants to speak uh, but in order to actually speak what i'll do is i will ask it to speak it in one go okay i will ask it to speak in one go what's what to speak 
uh, speak the translation that was made. So for example, this was the translation, right? So I'll store it in a variable. And whatever that translation was, I want the system to speak it. Fine, so this particular translation, I want the system to speak it and then get the result. Okay, it will get the result. So basically here the system is speaking something in this line of code, the system is speaking, fine. And that's all basically. Uh, here, uh, just the spelling mistake I've done, I'll just go ahead and correct that spelling mistake. It will be speak underscore text. This is it. Let me go ahead and let me run the code again. Let's check what will happen. Again, I'll try to convert it to Hindi, so I'll speak something, okay? Good afternoon, we are in India. Namaskar. Hum Bharat mein hai. Okay, so were you able to hear it, guys? I don't know whether the system audio is available to you or not. Were you able to hear it, that audio? I was able to hear Harsh, Har, sorry, Harish. Yes, okay. Fine, so you guys were able to hear it as well. Fine, so it's doing the job. Uh, what we'll say at the end is, uh, let's say if there is some error, then print that error, okay? Let's say if while trans speaking there is some error, then print that error. That if the, uh, you know, conversion was not successful, if speaking was not successful, then whatever is that error, uh, print that error. Okay, so I'll just be saying that that at the end, if let's say that entire thing did not completed, okay, if it was not completed, then just print what was the reason of non-completion. Okay, then just print what was the reason of non-completion. Fine, and that's it over here. Let me go ahead and uh, let me run the code once again let this time let me convert it to french language okay so since i want to convert it to french language automatically my code will choose this particular voice let's see good afternoon we are in india okay here you can see it generated some error and because of that error, what it said was, uh, okay, over here it gave me that, okay, there was some error while generating that voice. Let me check, is there a, it, I mean, was that error because of my mistake? Yes. I believe what I have done is, uh, this should be FR, not ER. So the name of the voice was given to, I mean, uh, here I specified wrong name of the voice. Let me correct it and now it should work. Okay, I'll convert it to French. Good afternoon, we are in India. Bon après-midi. Nous sommes en Inde. Okay, so you can see it has done that. Again, it will ask if you want to do the conversion. Okay, speech translation. Let's say you want to do it in Spanish. Good afternoon, we are in a webinar. Okay, here it gave an error for translating to Spanish. Let me check any other mistake I have done over here. Uh, I believe over here, the name of the uh, person is wrong. Elvira Neural. I had mentioned Elvira Neural. It is, it is an Elvira Neural, if I recollect correctly. Okay, so that name was wrong. Let me now run the code again. Now it should work. Let me convert it to Spanish again. Previously, we had an error. We have corrected the issue and now it should work. Good afternoon. We are in a webinar. Buenas tardes. Estamos en un webinar. Okay, and you can see it has done that over here. Fine. So like this, you can go ahead and keep on writing your code. Okay. And it will do the job for you. So, uh, Again, if you want to continue with this, you can as per the code what we have written, that if whatever you enter is not within the three target languages, then 
just assume that target language is equal to quit. And if target language is equal to quit, then just end the loop. Okay, because the loop will only run up till the target language is not equal to quit. So for example, if I type in anything apart from FR, ES, or HI, it will quit the loop. Let me type in something like U and it will quit the loop. Okay. And you can see the loop has ended. Okay. Fine. So over here, this was our main goal uh, to perform these three laps. Uh, guys, I hope uh, what we did made sense to you. Uh, what we mostly worked with Python programming language. I hope the coding flow made sense. Obviously, if you are new to Python programming language, uh, the syntax and everything you will have to learn. But I hope the coding flow made sense and it, it sparked some interest in you to learn more about these Azure uh, models that are already available inside the Azure platform. Like this, there are lots of other models, guys, that you can go ahead and you can use. Okay, uh, we just looked into three such models. Fine. So uh, over here, Ravi is asking, please, this is a sample video for Angular. Okay, Ravi, do one thing. I'll have to search in my repository. If possible, please connect to me on my LinkedIn. Although I will make sure that our marketing team, uh, I'll make sure that uh, I send the video link to marketing team and they mail to you. But if possible, uh, try to connect to my link LinkedIn. Um, just try to search for Smith uh, Synergetics and it should come up. Uh, I'll make sure that I search for my video over there and send the link to you. Okay. You can just search for Smith uh, Synergetics. I don't think my LinkedIn will open over here. I have not logged in. Okay. But try to do that. Fine. Uh, so I hope, guys, the webinar was a little useful for you. You did learn something of value. I hope I was able to spark a little interest in your minds with respect to Azure. And uh, the webinar was useful to you. If there are any doubts, you can ask me or else we are done for the day. Uh, OK, the video link, I'll make sure that once you connect to my LinkedIn, make sure to search for that particular tutorial video and send the link to you. And guys, if you want to practice more, uh, there is a, a, a online documentation for the same uh, that is created by Azure themselves. OK, so what you need to do is just go there and search for uh, uh, okay, what you can do is you can try this Microsoft learning dot github dot co put colon and then whatever you want to search for you can put over there. Okay, do what Microsoft learning dot github dot co colon and then put whatever you want to search over here. Let's say I want to search for AI. Okay, so I'll go ahead and search for it and you can see I will have the links for the same. So AI 900 certification all the labs that are there i'll have the link you can see all the labs so if you want to perform form recognition whatever it is you will get the labs available here how to perform it okay each and every step will be there let's say you don't want to go through ai 900 you want a more advanced certification ai 102 you will have labs for that also and here you can see labs for that in inside those labs step by step everything is given okay so this is the way in, you can, in which you can search. What to do? Microsoftlearning.github.co. Okay, put colon. And then after that, anything you want to search. Let's say you might want to search for DP203 certification. Okay, you want the labs for that. So just search for it. You will get the link for the same. Here it is. And here you will have labs for that. So this is the way in which you can search for any labs for uh, your Azure related certifications okay so this is it for today i hope uh, the webinar was little useful for you so guys uh, thanks a lot for your time thanks a lot for attending uh, we'll have more webinars scheduled wherein we'll uh, be going into more depth uh, also we will have um, some beginner level webinars as well in future okay so if at all let's say you guys are completely new to the field of AI. Uh, you guys are completely new to Python programming language. In that case, we'll have beginner level webinars as well. All right, so thank you. 
uh, yes thanks roy and thanks everybody else for attending and giving your time uh, that's it for today guys and bye uh, and uh, please stay tuned for more webinars okay bye guys bye everyone